In this video, we are going to hear about AWS Princess. Let me get started on what exactly is a permission set. Permission set, as you could see, there is nothing uh, but a set of, but a collection of permissions or like it's a JSON format wherein you could define what a certain user or a group can do within AWS accounts and applications. You could think about this as a like certain access templates, like a JSON file, that, for which you could just say that I want to give this service, this permission, attach it to a group and you'll be done. So let me show you how I can go about creating a permission set. So this is where one of the differences that AWS provides is you will get a predefined permission set, you get a custom permission sets. Predefined, it has these policies that are listed, but and you could use them if you think that this is something that could be useful. But a lot of times in our experience, we rarely use these ones because not we have very, very rarely come across a scenario where say, if I want to use billing, all the policies in the billing section, billing, billing permission set will be required by a certain group. It'll be very rare. And there are a lot of vulnerability scanning tools. What they will do is like, if a policy is not used, they will flag it because of which it will result in a vulnerability because it results in excessive permission. That is where in a lot of our customers' work we have done, we rarely have used permission to predefined permission set and majorly go with custom permission set that is over here. Now, this is a console I'm showing over here, but please stick with infrastructure as a code, either Terraform or CloudFormation or CDK. Go with those options and you'll be better off. But just for this purpose, I'm showing you how to go about it in the console. So you would choose this. And over here, again, you will see many options, which is AWS Managed Policies. It's nothing but predefined set of templates that AWS provides for us to go about using it. Now, if I have to choose one, like say if I wanted to do backup. Now, this is where I could see all the backup the policies that AWS provides. I get this full access. Now, let me say I need to choose this one. So I could do it, and if you want, you could expand it, and you could see all the different permissions that the backup provides. You get permission for backup for sure, backup service for sure, for storage, for RDS, because you will need to take snapshot permissions. The the DanmoDB, again, it's a similar to database, but uh, it's a NoSQL database. You get EFS, EC2, volume, AMI's backup. You will get all these permissions as part of this. So it's very helpful. You could definitely use this one and uh, go about it compared to the predefined permission set. So I definitely back, uh, this managed policy is very good. Customer managed policies, for those of you who have worked on IAM, AWS IAM, you would know that you could go about creating your own managed policy and you could attach it to more than one group. The benefit of managed policy, essentially it is, it is a common policy that you could do and uh, go about it. Inline policy, as the name says, it is essentially some a policy that you would assign to a particular group or a user, and it is only going to be within that user or group. You cannot share it across, come, unlike a managed policy. So that is the difference. So uh, because this session is not of a policy, it is of permission set and service control policies. So this is how I'll choose this one for now. And I'll hit the next button, give it a name. I'll say developer policy, and you should give a description. Kitchen duration, I'll give it as one hour. You could choose provide a longer duration if you want. And hit next. And this is where you you could review the screen where if you want. It's all good from my side. And I can come and create. Now this is where my permission set is policy permission set is created. If I see here, account is zero, as well as I will be able to see it is not provisioned out here. Why it is not provisioned? Because the account is zero. It, it is just created. So how do I attach it to an account? What I will need to do is I will need to come to the accounts. Now this is an account I need to choose. I could come here, I could select this one. Let me assign a user or group. I have a developer group already created. Let me choose this one here. And this is where I will see, this is the group that is created. Now this is where you will see the developer policy that I just created is showing out here. And this is what I can attach. And if I hit next and I do submit, this is where it is provisioning. It is sort of, deploying the policy for that particular group and that particular account. So now you could see you you have this ECS group uh, account actually. It's uh, I, I gave the name in one of the earlier videos and this is uh, the permission set. It is developer policy as there. And if I click over here, 
I would be able to see what is this policy doing and the setup of that out here. And now if I come back here to the permission set, I will see this as provisioned. So I hope this provides a good understanding of what exactly is a permission set. But essentially the characteristics, it's a reusable component. You could have this permission set, not just for one group, not just for one particular setting, you could do it for more than one. You could do it, attach it to more than one account as well. Now say I have this particular account out here because these are closed, it's showing as empty. If I want, I shouldn't do it at the management account because management account is only for managers and one or two users you would want to do. But say, just for the sake of this video, I'll just show it that I could always do it. I could choose a group. Again, if you want, you could do this developer. You could choose it. You could attach the policy and you, you can provision the same form more than one. So that is why I say it is reusable. It is customizable. You saw that I was able to it's not allowing me to cancel, okay? There you go. So now it is customizable because you can see that you can create the permission sets where you could provide your own JSON, make it very granular if you want, and have different, different permission sets that you can attach to different groups. So it's a lot more granular that you can achieve. Manageability, you could see it's so so manageable. You could just go and create and edit the templates. So what what makes a permission set? Well, first is the policies. You saw the policies that are there. If I go here, these are the different policies. They make the permission sets and the session duration. I, you saw that I chose for one hour. You could choose for a session for more longer than that. And that is what the, the session duration would be setting. So when do I use the, when do I use the permission set? First of all, if I need a cross account access in AWS, like in organizations, you would see these are the different accounts as of now. If one account, say ECS, needs access to another account over here, not the management account, another account, then yes, you would be ideally going to go with a permission set. Application access. What it will allow you to do is allow the users or the group to access specific AWS applications with the necessary permissions. And of course, RBAC, rule-based access control, is what you will be getting as well. Please like, subscribe, share the video. Please contact us for any of your cloud requirements or cloud consulting requirements. We have decades of experience in cloud and we can definitely help your organization take the right step in cloud. With that, thank you and see you for in the next video.